In this third talk we will continue the analysis of multiphase displacement, with special attention to what is known as the frontal advance theory. The objective is to demonstrate that, with this theory, it is impossible to describe multiphase flow in real systems. The analysis starts from the one-dimensional solution developed by Buckley and Leverett in 1942 and compares this approach with real, physical, hydrocarbon systems. The previous presentations can be summarized in two slides. The first slide shows what happens, even in very simple systems, when we try to describe the behavior, of the same production end, through the relationship between the flow capacity of the different phases that flow across that production end and the average fluid saturation of the system. We quickly verify that this relationship strongly depends on the type of displacement, the balance of forces and even the geometry or spatial orientation of the volume of porous medium that we are considering. And precisely, what we need, in any real case of reservoir engineering, field, or lab, is to link production with the average fluid saturation of the system. It is necessary to remember that the points, where flow rates interest us, are the production end in the case of lab samples, any face of a grid cell in a numerical simulation, and producer wells in a real reservoir. The second slide shows that, although each point has a perfectly defined color, it is impossible to define a single color for this fractal image. And, in the same way, in real multiphase displacement systems, when we are in a non-stationary state, that is, during displacement, although any point has a perfectly defined transmission capacity for each phase, the system as a whole does not have a defined average transmission capacity. This circumstance prevents us from defining the average permeability for a phase in a non-stationary non-punctual system. To these slides we will add a phrase taken from the second book by Laurie Dake, which shows the importance that is given, precisely, to rel perms in the modeling of fluid movement in reservoir engineering. Continuing with the analysis, we look in detail at the solution presented by Buckley and Leverett in 1942, for very simplified geometries. This work is foundational for reservoir engineering. Some of the phrases in that work indicate that their analysis is basically qualitative. Is aimed at a very simplified one-dimension system in a single flow direction. What is being studied is basically a plane perpendicular to the advance of the fluids. And, in order to carry out the analysis, the authors neglect, or initially discard, the impact of capillary and gravitational phenomena in such a way that they are able to work with a simplified fractional flow curve, which allows them to describe the system at any point of the one-dimension flow path. They do not try to describe the system as a whole but at definite points, through some very simple equations, presented in their publication. What this work shows is that, in a homogeneous linear system, with constant fluid injection, any saturation plane of the displacing fluid moves at constant speed. However, throughout the work, the authors repeatedly mention that in order to describe real systems, it is necessary to take into account capillary and gravitational phenomena, in addition to what we call external forces or viscous forces. We can summarize this publication through a few sentences. That each displacing fluid saturation plane advances at constant speed along the linear system. And that, as a consequence, there is a saturation that has the maximum advance speed and it is called, saturation of the displacement front. On the other hand, the work introduces and uses the fractional flow curve. This curve is identical for any plane perpendicular to the axis of displacement. That is, any point along the system is adequately described with the same fractional flow curve. That is something that makes the forward advance theory very attractive. Throughout the analysis, the subscript D refers to the displacing phase, in the case we are analyzing, we are interested in the fractional flow of water linked to the saturation of this same phase. Welch's publication, 10 years after the work of Buckley and Leverett, also describes the behavior, 
in a linear system, of a plane perpendicular to that displacement and presents the equations that popularized the frontal advance theory. These are the two basic equations presented in this work where, precisely, the variables of interest mentioned at the beginning of this presentation are linked together. The average water saturation of the system and the flow capacity, or rate at the production end. In this analysis, the fractional flow curve plays an essential role since both, its absolute value and its derivative with respect to water saturation, are used. But of course, a linear system has a single production end. Let's see, then, if it is possible to generalize the solution presented by Buckley and Leverett and complemented by Welch, and, thus, apply it in two or three dimensional systems. For that, we are going to see a simple two dimensional example. We are observing three different displacements in the same cell. In each displacement, the water injection is chosen in such a way as to generate different flow geometries. The first thing that can be observed is that there are more production ends and second, that, depending on how the water is injected, different links may appear between average water saturation and water flow capacity. For example, for a certain average water saturation, the end side indicated in diagram A has a fractional flow of water equal to zero. While the same end side, with the same average water saturation, in scheme C has a fractional flow different from zero. In other words, the same average water saturation can be associated with different fractional flows at any of the production ends that we choose. These diagrams show that aerial or volume trick systems are subject to a noticeably different behavior from what we observed in the case of linear systems. In those cases, the same model cell can present very different relationships between average water saturation and flow capacity to other cells in the system. To look at a simple application of the example used in the previous slide, in this case we have a two-dimensional system modeled by a grid where all cells have the same geometric and petrophysical properties. Once the indicated injection point has been chosen, it can be seen that, for a certain advance of the water front, there are what we could call type A cells, defined in the previous slide, and other cells equivalent to what we could call type C cells. In this case, the two cells have, approximately, the same average water saturation, However, the equivalent production ends, which communicate with other similar cells, present a very different flow rate capacity. And this difference is due only to the geometric location of both cells. This means that identical cells, although subjected to a displacement that does not consider capillary or gravitational effects, present different relationships between flow capacity and average water saturation at equivalent production ends. In summary, in two- and three-dimensional systems, if the water saturation is not homogeneous, it is impossible to define a multiphase flow curve that depends only on the system average water saturation. As a side note, real systems include additional complexities to those we have mentioned in these very simple models. Although the analysis in this presentation are made on homogeneous systems, real systems, as Welch acknowledges in his 1952 work, always include what he calls stratification and which we generically qualify as heterogeneities. After finishing this analysis, and adding to the first two talks, we can draw a first conclusion. It is impossible to describe the multiphase flow of any system with more than one dimension, basically any real system, with a rel perm curve that depends only on the average water saturation of the system. This is possible, only in one dimension linear systems, as shown by Buckley and Leverett and the authors who continued that line of research, but real systems require that, in order to link the variables that interest us, we must specify the production end that we are describing and also we must consider the balance of forces that mobilize the fluids. Once we move away from the linear systems, the production end becomes one more variable in the system. Heterogeneities should also be included, since it is not enough to describe homogeneous systems. And, in the calculations as well,
it is necessary to take into account the impact of location and spatial orientation of the cells. To some extent this is summed up by saying that physical modeling cannot be done with a static curve, but requires dynamic calculations to be able to link water saturation with flow capacity at each production end. The next developments includes the analysis of the fractional flow curve and is going to be divided into two parts. In the first part we will analyze the properties of the fractional flow curve, because it provides a very widespread way of analyzing multiphase displacements, regardless of the theory that gave rise to it. As we will see, the fractional flow curve is used to generalize scenarios and draw conclusions regardless of the assumptions the authors made when introducing its use. In the second part we will analyze, the ways different authors tried to correct the general fractional flow curve with simple calculations, in order to include capillary and gravitational effects in the forward advance theory.